Now this is definitely a very, very interesting question, but I got a confusion as well. Should I call this video as web scraping or web automation with JavaScript? Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video and in this video I'm going to answer a question which is very interesting and the question says that in order to do these web automation or web scraping is Python only the language which is capable of doing it? And the answer is no, of course not. There are hundreds of other languages which are perfectly capable of doing a lot of web automation and web scraping as well. Of course, Java can do it. Of course, JavaScript can do it. And of course, Python can do it and a lot more others as well. In this video, I would like to introduce you with one such thing which is totally in JavaScript and which is going to help you to perform web automation as well as web scraping. Now the reason why I am confused of naming this video as web automation or web scraping is because what we are doing is kind of web automation but what we are performing and achieving at the end of this video is the web scraping. Regardless of that, in this video, I would like to give you a brief introduction about Puppeteer, which is a very powerful module in the Node.js or simply calling it as JavaScript and which will help you to achieve a lot of things in the web automation as well as in the web scraping. This video is a getting started guide for absolute beginner who have never touched any kind of web automation or Puppeteer or as a matter of fact, web scraping as well. So this will give you a brief idea of how to do that and how to perform that. The only thing that is required is you should have Node.js installed on your system. I'm really not picky about the versions of Node.js that you should have. As long as you have Node.js installed, anything very close to the latest as of now, that's fine and that's totally is required for this particular video. Now rest of the talk about Puppeteer, Puppeteer, however you want to say that, is going to be on the desktop itself. So let's go ahead and move on to my computer and let's learn a bit about Puppeteer, Puppeteer, however that is. Let's start and talk about the Puppeteer. Now, of course, the official thing to go about these is to go through their documentation and have uh, some of the stuff. Uh, first, let's go on to their official website, which is pptr.dev, a uh, nice name and everything is actually mentioned here. Documentation is pretty thorough, pretty in-depth and a whole bunch of things are there. In case you want to have a bit more of the things, you can definitely visit their GitHub repo as well. So it would be really amazing if we check out these documentation a bit and do some of these custom codes implementation as well side by side. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal and we just need to create a directory. I'm going to call this as uh, YouTube fun. Uh, that's a nice name. I would like to fire this up in my code browser. If I can find where my code, not browser, code editor. Uh, there we go. This is my code editor. I'm going to close this one. And for some reasons, I'm not able to open this up from my terminal. That's why I'm doing this drag and drop stuff. So I'm going to just drag and drop this guy. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to just move it to the full extend. And there we go. And what I want to do here is open up the inbuilt terminal here and I want to install npm. So I'm going to initialize the npm in it. I'll pass on a dash y so that it doesn't really ask me any question at all. And I want to install Puppeteer. So of course the best way is to go to the website and say how should I install it and it's going to tell you right up here npi npm install Puppeteer. So we're going to copy that, paste that up here. And there we go, it's doing all of its stuff in the background. I don't need to be bothered anything there. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file. I'm gonna call this as index.js. Feel free to call it anything. It doesn't really matter much. Just make sure in the package.json, uh, whatever you are saying, that file name is here. Although it doesn't really matter in this case too, but it's a good practice. You should not avoid that. Okay, so this is all done. And one package is looking for fund. Uh, we should really donate them. and. Moving forward, if we look on to the website, official GitHub or the documentation, this is the example which is absolutely same. Let's copy paste this one in my code editor and then we are going to discuss this, uh, how to run this and all those stuff. So there we go, looking absolutely beautiful here. So first and foremost, at the top, just like always we do, we are requiring the puppeteer here and then we are firing an async call here. Uh, which is uh, having a browser await. So it's basically launching our browser. Then we are having a page uh, which is opening up the browser and firing up a new page. And here we can simply go to uh, an example.com and can have a screenshot of this web page. Now for the screenshot, I would like to go to uh, wiki. So I'm going to go on to Wikipedia 
and would like to search a very specific thing, uh, which you should also do. So that is uh, Corona uh, virus. You definitely should get a more information on this. That's why I'm picking this up. So let's go ahead and copy this. And instead of opening up example.com, I would like to get up here and uh, then it just fires up the web page. It go to a simple web page and fires up a screenshot. That's awesome that we can take screenshot and call it as example. I want to call it as wiki.png. And then it just closed the browser. First and foremost, let's run what's the default up here. So let's go ahead and clean the screen. And I simply want to say node index.js. Let's go ahead and do so. And it's not doing anything as of now, but now the script is closed. It didn't launch any browser or anything. I'll tell you the reason for that as well in a minute. Let's go to YouTube and we can see that we have got wiki.png uh, being uh, launched up here. So it takes a screenshot, that's nice, but I'm not able to see any browser or anything happening. The reason for that is because by default, the launch when it happens, it makes a launch of a headless as a true. So it doesn't really launch a GUI version of the browser. How should I put it up? But you can pass on an object here that says a headless is gonna be false. So that's a flag that you need to turn off. Save that and now we can run this again. And now it it just opens up the browser, but how can I bring this back onto my screen? It's just so fast. We need to just uh, kind of a hold it somewhere uh, so that it doesn't really close the browser as quickly as it is trying to do. Uh, I guess we can uh, we can put some of these options here. Uh, let me just show you that so that it doesn't really uh, close the browser before I even show it to you. And we're gonna simply say await and uh, then we're gonna call this browser object and we're gonna simply say wait for target. So please wait for me till I just go for that. And in here we just fire a callback with an empty and we call it as simply false. So just wait for me, wait for me till I just show everybody what's going on. So this line is just holding the browser for a second. So let's go ahead and fire it up. So this is what it does. It opens up a browser uh, in a very small-ish uh, web page in here. And then we are having this coronavirus being page open up. Okay, nice, now we can close this up. Now, I usually don't like my script to be stopping just like that. So I'm gonna just comment this down again. And uh, now what we're gonna do is move on to the documentation again. So let's go up here and uh, in here actually. If you notice here, uh, a little bit at this, the get dimension here, that we can have this dimension and we can just use this page.evaluate and fire up a callback and do a whole bunch of things inside this. So whether you want to check the height of your web page width or maybe you want to grab some data or anything, that I think usually happens in this page.evaluate. Not sure, I haven't read much thoroughly with the documentation. So I think that's the one. So uh, this is the one that we are gonna do. So let's go ahead and copy this and try out some fun stuff here. So I'm gonna go up here, uh, make some room for me. There we go. So we're gonna simply call this as dimensions. No, not dimensions. We're gonna call this as result. So await page evaluate and in here, there we go. And then we just simply go ahead and fire a callback, just like regular JavaScript, nothing fancy. So in my web page, as you can see, uh, this is a coronavirus page. It has a lot of headings. And let's just say for some random reason, I want to grab all these headings. So one good way will be just to go ahead and do inspect and fire up the stuff in the console. And uh, if we just do an inspection on these, I, I have done these kinds of things in the past on the YouTube as well. We can see there is a span of class which says MW heading and I can grab the objects from uh, this MW heading. It's a good idea that if we do all these things first up here. So let's go ahead and clean this up and we're gonna simply say that I want a document dot and I want to use a query selector all. So query selector all and I want to use a class. So I'm gonna simply have a dot, there we go. Close this guy, close this. I know this is a very short. And this gives me a node list back. And I can, in theory, hold that in some uh, in some variable. So let's call it as simply A. I know that's not a good variable. I'll do a better job in while writing the actual code. So let's just call it as A as of now. 
Now A is holding a node list and then we can create an array from this node list. So I'm gonna call this as a B, very bad variable name. So I'm gonna simply go ahead and use triple dots and an A and now in theory B is holding an array which is holding all the node list and the advantage of this is I can now loop through this array. I could have done a better job in the node list as well but let's just say. So I can simply go ahead and simply say that B dot and I can map through it and in the map I can say uh, for all the headings just go ahead and loop through every one of them and I want to etch grab the inner HTML or inner text, inner text. Let's try that. So we're gonna go ahead and inner text and there we go. So this is actually giving me all the things as all the headings as back. So let's go ahead and try to do exact same thing. I'm gonna copy this one here because yeah, why not? So we're gonna go ahead and paste that. So instead of A, <laughs> that's uh, very bad. I'm gonna call this as heading from heading from web, oops, heading from web. We are uh, firing up a document.query selector and which is uh, bringing me all the headings into a node list. Then uh, we're gonna simply say, hey, I want to create a heading list, heading list. And now in the heading list, all we have to do is the repeat dot 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 and then heading from web, there we go, now it is stored. And now one interesting thing, make sure you look that into the documentation, uh, that here we are returning something and then we can actually do a console.log here. So we are closely following the documentation as of now. And we're gonna simply do a return statement. And on this heading list, again, the same stuff, nothing a rocket science here. We're gonna simply map for all the headings. Just go ahead and I need heading dot inner HTML or text, inner text inner text, there we go. Okay, so should be all good, let's save this. And it looks pretty good. Apart from one thing, we forgot to do any console log of this result, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna simply fire a console log, and please give me a result. There we go, looks decent so far. Save that, and it should be all good. Now, why is it having so much trouble in here? Let's go ahead and close this, and clean the terminal and fire this one again. And my browser for a second actually opened up on my other screen. And we were able to grab this all nice and smooth. Now again, there are a couple of more options here which I would highly recommend you to uh, go ahead and take a look while reading the documentation in case you are further interested. The first one is how to hold the browser for some target. Maybe you want to perform some web automation where you need the web to stay there and then you want to enter some text. So that's where it is gonna be useful. Now as of now, we are just firing the the web page, but we are not waiting the web page to load properly. For that, we have some of these uh, network lines that we can hold or we can just set it off. And again, uh, in the Puppeteer website, uh, the documentation is phenomenal. And we can see we have got access to worker, page, uh, even the keyboard, even the mouse clicks and stuff like that. So it's a very thoroughly written documentation. I don't think anybody should have any much of the problem if he knows how to uh, even go through along with the documentation. So that is going to be uh, the basics of it. So let me show you the code part one more time in case you are looking up on, on a web page trying to replicate that. So this is what we are having. And now again, one more important thing that I have to tell you. I hope you have enjoyed this fun video about Puppeteer. In case you want me to create more such video, let me know in the comment section and I would love to see your comments about what next should I take up and what next technology should I introduce you in the very simplest manner that you have ever seen. Now don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course, don't forget to join me up on Insta. I'd love to catch you up there as well. And I'll surely catch you up in the next video. Life is a winding road no telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights